I'd like to begin with the first question. In your address to us, you touched on two of the themes which are really central to your personality and to your public persona. One is a commitment to democracy, and the other is a belief in education as a key social solvent and transforming force. So I'd like to ask you about the link between the two, the link between education and democracy, and really the role that universities might play in educating Democrats. Do you think that should be a core part of their mission? And if so, how would you advise us to move forward with that? About democracy and education, I was trying to explain that, in my opinion, democracy and education are closely linked because democracy is based on people and the better educated people are, the more widely educated the public is, the better for democracy. And uh, Professor Halliday also asked me whether universities should to teach students about democracy. And I think they should, because it's the work of universities not just to fill students' heads with facts, but to help them to be better citizens of the world. And I think by doing that, you contribute to democracy. Also, uh, it's a great honor to meet you here at this video conference, and I'd like to continue with this theme of uh, democracy. Uh, as you know, much has been said about the, the need for a concert of democracies to uh, strengthen cooperation among democratic countries. Also, as you know, uh, Tain Sein just visited Beijing and called the relationship between uh, Burma and China, uh, China's relationship with Burma, as the most important diplomatic relationship for Burma. Now, do you see a trend emerging uh, of non-democracies, such as Burma and China and maybe Iran, North Korea, strengthening their relations in order to make the world safe for authoritarianism? It is possible that those governments which do not yet value a democracy would like to look upon each other as allies. But I think in the long run, we must all go towards democracy because that is the system that puts the greatest value on the people. It's not because we think that democracy is perfect, but because democracy means respect for the people that we think that democracy will succeed in the long run because everybody wants to be respected. Maybe sometimes other things come before this, this desire and need for respect. Other things such as fear may stop them from working for, for self-respect. But in the long run, I think we will succeed. And I think that even governments will understand that only if they respect the people can they, in the long run, be able to respect themselves. Thank you. I, I hope you're right. Well, I think so. We believe good business does need to protect and respect human rights. My question is, um, Dosu, what is the biggest challenge to you, apart from education, uh, to continue non-violence campaign to protect human rights? Well, the greatest challenge is to try to establish rule of law in Burma, and that means an independent judiciary. In order to do good business, I think we need rule of law as well. So it's businessmen who will also profit from the rule of law. We think that unless there's an independent judiciary and the rule of law, we cannot really make progress to this human rights and democracy. And we certainly will not be able to achieve the kind of business climate that promotes human rights. That you suggested the country of China, they have to open up to the people and let them to and let them to have a freedom of expression. But right now, we all understand that there is no freedom of expression, no freedom of the press, and no freedom of movement. So, under these circumstances, can you give us some suggestion or recommendations for those of the people in China that they how they can fight for their rights? Thank you.
although you say that there's no freedom of expression in China, I do hear of many Chinese people expressing themselves, expressing what they think about politics, about economics, about social problems. So I think the Chinese people will find ways of creating freedom of expression. I think we all have to create our own freedom in the end. And uh, the only thing I can say is that if you are trying to achieve freedom in China, you're not alone. There are many people all over the world who are trying to do the same thing. And we're all with you. And in any case, China as a big country with an enormous population should be at the vanguard of any movement like this. Uh, in 1989, students in China gathered in Beijing Tiananmen Square demanding for democracy, but they, but they got cracked down on June 4th. Do you see similarities between the June 4th massacre and your fight for democracy? Thank you. I don't think it is very surprising that long-established authoritarian regimes should resist calls for democracy. Uh, this, this happens all over the world. I mean, you can see it happening in the Middle East now. But uh, that does not mean that we, Burma and China, are in any way strange or peculiar because these things have happened in our countries. These are sad events. These are not events that we will look back to as the high points in our history. But these are troubles that have to be overcome. And these are processes that we have to get through in order to get to where we want to, with a lot of hard work. I don't think we get anywhere just simply by sitting and wishing for it. We've got to work towards what we want. Those who we admire your courage and your wisdom. We have a question here. You are an icon of nonviolence. What are your thoughts on the recent death of bin Laden? I, I have to admit that again, you know, I always feel uncomfortable when people refer to me as an icon. But with regard, with regard to the recent death of bin Laden, it just showed that violence ends with violence and that there is too much violence already in our world and we've got to try to do something about this. It is not that I'm thinking of it in purely morals, moral terms, as I said previously. I'm thinking of it in political terms. Are we not educated enough? Are we not intelligent enough as the human race to find solutions which are not violent? We should be able to do this. This should be part of our education. This should be part of every child's education, to find ways and means of achieving the ends that we wish for without resorting to violence. Throughout your career, you've been very insistent that democracy cannot come by focusing on one person, i.e. yourself. And you've appealed to the people of Burma to join you in, in the hard work that is necessary to create democracy here in Burma. But I'm interested in your message for people outside Burma. What, what can people outside do to support the struggle of the Burmese people for a more democratic system? First of all, they've got to take an interest in what's happening in Burma to really uh, try to find out what's going on here. And then they can do practical things like getting in touch with the NLD mm -hmm. and getting in touch with all these other organizations outside Burma who are trying to help us to achieve democracy. There are very many ways in which you can do it, especially now with the improvement in communications. We can keep in touch. We can help each other. Now, of course, right at this moment, Hong Kong University is helping us in our quest for democracy by making it possible for people in China and Hong Kong to hear the voice of democracy in Burma.